This video's fan shout out goes to Nintendo fan. Thank you for your support. <laughs> Time. We're all thinking about it as we head from one decade to a new one. What awaits in the 2020s? What fond memories do we have of the past? It makes it a great time to look at this game, something made for the modern age that pays tribute to gaming from a simpler time, a time of charming 3D platformers being huge in the gaming industry. This is a hat in time, finally right where it should have been from the start, on the Nintendo Switch. A Hat in Time is meant to hail a revival of the charming, cartoony 3D platformer in the industry. Although other games have come out recently that also carry this intention, those same inspirations for this game are felt strongly and it works in its favor. We follow a girl simply known as the Kid with the Hat, or Hat Kid. While traveling through space on her journey to return home, a Mafia thug flies up and attacks, causing a hull breach that sends 40 of the ship's timepieces spilling out and scattering across a few nearby planets. Thanks for ruining my trip, jackass! They're really inconsiderate. Now in order to continue her journey home, Hat Kid must platform her way through all these worlds to retrieve the lost timepieces. Like typical 3D platformers that inspire this game, it's a simple story that does all it needs to for setting up a fun adventure. A Hat in Time uses a similar cel-shaded art style to The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, creating this feel of a comic book come to life with its expressive and out-there cartoony characters and settings. So everything from the models to the environments and lighting is well designed to present an entrancing and fun world to jump around in. Sound also contributes to this with more effort than you might expect from a 3D platformer. The sound effects have a comic flair to them, the music is vibrant and lively no matter the level, and what surprised me the most was how much voice acting is here. The dialogue visually is presented like a Banjo-Kazooie game, but dubbed over like Conker's Bad Fur Day. You get the sense that the actors are actively trying to add more to the over-the-top tone of the game. The game is designed like Super Mario Sunshine meets Mario Galaxy meets Banjo-Kazooie with a hint of Wind Waker. Hat Kid can jump and dive like Mario, and in some cases, better than Mario. Her jumping ability is frankly impressive, and she can run up walls for a few seconds. Now, this may sound trivial by itself, until you play and realize just how vital her skills are for the challenges. Much of the platforming is designed around these abilities, and new abilities she learns from found badges that grant her a hookshot and magnetic pull for collecting things easier, just to name a few. Holy shit! Let's make Did I mention one badge gives her an umbrella laser? Actually, she has a few different attacks. There's her main umbrella melee attack, as well as diving at an enemy's head, which also gives you a minor jump. So sometimes it's a necessary attack for platforming, which not only draws from Mario concepts, but also expands upon them. But hats are important to this game too. She's not called Hat Kid for nothing. Similar to hats from Mario 64, her different hats grant her different powers, and you'll need to swap between them to get through each platforming challenge, and fortunately you can easily do this on the fly without using the pause menu. This gives the game better flow and allows you more time to explore these worlds. Though there aren't as many worlds as bigger budget titles, each one feels very unique with its own design, characters, and scenarios. The Hollywood world that has levels based around being a movie star working for very different directors, for example, is completely different from the spookier than you'd expect Subcon Forest. That's not an exaggeration. You thought the piano in Mario 64 was scary? You haven't tried staying hidden from the ghost of Queen Vanessa. <laughs> That's something else that actually makes this game stand out from others of its genre. It actually has some pretty different challenge types. In one act, as the levels are called, you could be rescuing a girl with a mustache from the Mafia or exploring the free-roaming cat-controlled Metropolis, which is actually a DLC level, and in another act you could be solving a mystery while having to avoid being spotted by angry crows or a terrifying ghost. But there's also the bonus time rifts that appear. These truly take inspiration from the bonus levels in Super Mario Sunshine, as there are otherworldly platforming challenges with a timepiece at the end. They do get harder each time, but a great thing about this game is its use of checkpoints. When you fall to your death, you'll restart right before that portion of jumping instead of all the way at the beginning. Some purists may dislike this, but it's still a fun game for veterans in every other way while still being more accessible to players new to 3D platformers. Which is a good thing because the boss fights in particular can be really challenging and force you to have fast reflexes and be clever. And throughout all of this is a game that's a collectathon in the truest sense. Because while you're rewarded with timepieces for each act, you'll also need to grab all these other items to complete the game. Money for buying new badges and unlocking some acts, little gifts you can put together to form impressive set pieces, and coins for buying other little goodies to put on display in your ship. So there's quite a bit to do in this game. The amount of things to do can increase thanks to two DLC packs that contain two new worlds, a death wish mode for people who really want a challenge, and the kind of local co-op that we were hoping to see in a game like this for years. My recommendation is that you get this game bundled with the DLC so you can really have hours of fun with this title and its incredible imagination. 
A Hat in Time feels right at home on the Switch, a game strangely addictive to those of us who grew up playing the games that inspired it 10 and 20 years ago. It's available for $30 to $40 depending on if you buy the physical version, digital version, or digital DLC bundle. A decent price for what the game is. So get the game and enjoy this mix of old and new as we gaze onward to the future. If you like my review of A Hat in Time for the Switch, then check out my previous reviews of these other 3D platformers made by indie developers, Ukulele for the Switch and Freeze Me for the Wii U. And from all of us here at the Nintendo Reviewer Channel, have a Happy New Year! Yes! Happy New Year! Happy New Year!